started. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Wood. I am going to be your presenter tonight and we're going to be talking today about uh, uh, shipping your own items on eBay. And uh, I meant to, to have, well, it is up here as a title, shipping your own items. So um, here are a few questions I've uh, uh, had that I want to cover. Uh, if you have any additional questions related to how to choose shipping, uh, uh, what shipping carriers, or, or you know, any if you have any shipping-related questions about eBay, please put them in the uh, uh, the shipping box if they're not already on the screen here, so that we can cover that. And then we're going to go through each of these different things to uh, to talk about the the shipping. Now, I uh, uh, I'll try and keep this. Uh, uh, these questions up where you can see them while I am also working on uh, starting to go through the process. So we'll just kind of move that over there so you can see the questions hopefully still. And then um, we're going to, to go through this. So here I'm looking at my uh, eBay account. If we go to the uh, awaiting shipment section, see if I have a, a few items uh, from today. I do have a couple of, uh, of items in there that we can uh, look at this on. So in eBay, I, I don't know if my wife changed the, the setup here or if eBay changed the setup on me, but uh, this uh, uh, actions column used to be over on the right side. But uh, regardless of where it is, you look for that actions column in your eBay account in the My eBay under the sold items or the awaiting shipping uh, items. And that's what we're going to be looking for to find our printing label, okay? So basically first, uh, let's just go through the basics of shipping an item on eBay. So if I have this item right here that needs to be shipped, uh, I can come in and notice that is, uh, uh, that's a, uh, a shockproof iPad cover, uh, which would be an item that is probably pretty popular and uh, for most I would say, avoid it unless you can get your hands on a bunch of them with surplus or liquidation or something like that, which is the case for me. I've got a whole box of these uh, at home. So how do we ship it? Well, once the item is paid, that's the first thing is make sure that the item is paid. Right here, see this where it's black? It says paid with PayPal on November 10th, 2015. So it actually tells me that it is paid. Uh, it shows up black. If it wasn't paid, it would be gray and it would be in the awaiting payment section right here like these are and so you can see that's gray this one hasn't been paid this item has not been paid and it hasn't been paid long enough that an unpaid item uh, uh, the unpaid item assistant opened a case on the buyer to have them uh, come pay that okay so if it's gray on the dollar it hasn't been paid if the check box uh, is gray that means buyer has not completed the checkout and uh, I uh, have the uh, premium uh, store account, and, and so I've got the Selling Manager Pro, and uh, so it might look a little bit different from what you have, but you will have definitely a, an active section, a sold section under your eBay where you'll have your items. Um, mine's got uh, the uh, awaiting payment uh, and uh, awaiting shipment sections. So you always check in here to see if the item uh, has been paid. And so when it shows there, again, that they have completed checkout, it's dark, they uh, have paid, and it tells me when. So now I can come over here and say, okay, I'm gonna print the shipping label, and that's just on this under this actions column. Um, there are a number of other things that you can do under here. Uh, yeah, the shipping label is the top one. We could add tracking. Uh, we could view the sales record. We could print, uh, you know, another print shipping labels or invoices. We could mark it as shipped. So if you're doing a drop ship item, you can come in and do that. We can contact the buyer. We can cancel the order. We can sell a similar or relist the item. We can archive it or we can report a buyer for some reason. So all of those options are under there. If you're wondering how to do something, check that first because oftentimes you'll find the answer there. So we're going to go to print shipping. So this is how you'll uh, you'll ship an item on eBay. Uh, just click that print shipping link. Brings us up to the purchase and print US postage page right here. And uh, in here, I can choose how to print this uh, item. Okay. Now it has, uh, I have pre-stated that this item will ship via first class. I have uh, populated the weight with 10 ounces. 
If that is uh, different when I go to ship it and it's actually less than that or more than that, I can change that right here. So if this is a 10 ounce item, then US Postal Service first class shipping is going to be the, the best way to do the shipping. If it's a heavier item, uh, maybe I need to change the dimensions and the weight. I could come in here and say, no, this is uh, one pound, 10 ounces. And so then we can uh, save that and it will update and I can't ship first class then because uh, the item actually weighs a little bit more. So I'm going to have to change that. So I could do a priority mail option. And uh, then, well, they're going to ask me, I didn't... Uh, click calculate earlier. So they're going to ask me the weight. So if I put in the weight here, one pound, 10 ounces uh, and calculate, it's going to tell me that uh, priority mail, since this is just going to California, I'm in Utah, you know, it's a neighboring state real close. It's only $5.84. Okay. If I were to change that weight, let's say we put it at three pounds and recalculate that. Now all of a sudden my uh, uh, priority mail goes up to $8. Still not too bad, but what about FedEx? We can click on FedEx right here and I can choose a different uh, um, carrier for my item. So there I've got the weight. Um, it's not an overnight package, which is what they default to. We'll go to FedEx Smart Post. And there I've got uh, a shipping rate at 726 instead of the eight something that I had before. So if this were a, a three pound, 10 ounce item, it might actually be cheaper to ship it through FedEx than through the US Postal Service. I find that most of the time it is a, um, better to ship through FedEx if it's a heavier item than through priority mail. It's gonna be cheaper for you, okay? So, what do we do then? Once we uh, have determined how we're going to ship it, uh, we just click uh, um, Create Label, and uh, we're off and running. Now, of course, uh, this item does not weigh three pounds, so I don't want to do that, and I'm not positive of what the weight is on that item, so I'm not going to print the label right here. Um, we could look at, uh, let's look at this one here. This uh, uh, should have a heavier weight. Okay, so here's another uh, example. This uh, item, Let's pull that up in another screen or another window here so you can see it. So this is a heavier item. Uh, it uh, has some bulk to it. It's over a pound. Uh, first class, uh, if it's uh, under 13 ounces, I can ship first class with USPS and get pretty cheap shipping. But uh, this item, since uh, it weighs more than a pound, it's a lot of heavy metal there, you can see. Uh, I'm going to have to ship this uh, a priority or, uh, or a FedEx uh, type shipping. Now, it is going to Indiana, so it's going to be a little bit uh, uh, farther for us to ship. Uh, what I've decided with these heavy items is I'll just do a flat rate shipping because there's, it's very unlikely I'm going to get cheaper shipping with any other uh, option than I can with a flat rate. So let's talk about flat rate shipping. There are many options with flat rate. We have, starting right up here, a flat rate envelope. Now this flat rate envelope is uh, uh, generally used for eight by eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper, just your your traditional uh, paper size. That's uh, that's what it's meant for. However, as long as you can seal that envelope, it doesn't matter what shape it is. If it fits inside the envelope and it's under seventy pounds, they will ship it with a flat rate envelope. Okay. And so I use this all the time for small items. Uh, I'll put it in a box or wrap it in bubble wrap and then stick it in this flat rate envelope and ship the item that way. And so that actually might be a little cheaper for me here if I do a flat rate envelope on this. Instead of the padded flat rate, it goes from 570 on the padded flat rate down to 505. Okay, so I can see what my costs are right here and I can play around with this until I get the perfect. Uh, uh, you know, the lowest uh, price uh, cost on my things. Um, so the flat rate envelope is one option. If it's too big to fit in that, then I might go to um, a large flat, or no, I'm sorry, legal flat rate envelope. It's a little bit longer. And so that oftentimes uh, will work for me. Um, we've got the small flat rate box. Uh, it's a small box about, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, eight or nine inches long. Um, four or five wide and an inch and a half uh, thick. So if you have an item that's heavy but small, 
it could fit in that flat rate box and you could do it that way. Uh, if we need to go a little bigger, then we've got a medium flat rate box. Now, U.S. Postal Service actually has two sizes to the medium flat rate box and two sizes to the large flat rate box. So it's not just a, a one size uh, type of situation here. If you have uh, uh, something that needs to go in one of those flat rate options, uh, they've got uh, one that's a little more square and then they've got uh, one that's more uh, of a long and narrow uh, type of a box. And uh, that's the situation in both the, uh, the large and the uh, medium flat rate boxes. And so you do have those uh, options to, to look at with flat rate boxes uh, if you want to do something uh, that's a little bit bigger. Okay, uh, they have uh, all of those dimensions for the flat rate boxes on their website, the USPS.com. So you could go out there and look at their uh, box dimensions if you wanted to and, and measure things to decide if one of those boxes might fit for you or, or might uh, do the job. Uh, you can also get the dimensions of the envelopes out there uh, and look at those. Remember, those uh, are flat dimensions. If we're going to be putting a box inside of it, uh, it's going to change it a little bit. Uh, but, uh, heck, these supplies are free. You can pick them up at the post office and take them home. You can have them shipped to you free through the postal service. So if you're going to be shipping a few things uh, from home, it doesn't hurt to have those uh, items uh, sent to you so that you have that option to look at. Okay. So those are some of the different ways that you can ship. I never ship parcel select because it's very close to priority mail but uh, in, in cost, but it uh, oftentimes will take more than the nine days they stay here, sometimes two weeks or more to get to the people. So I've had a lot of complaints with that, so I never use that uh, option, uh, even with the, uh, the cheapest shipping that I do. Okay. I don't do Priority Mail Express uh, either. Media Mail, you can do with books. Um, I find if the book is, is small enough, if it's less than 13 ounces, uh, it's best to just do first class. It's actually cheaper um, from what I've, uh, you know, for small books that are just a few ounces. Uh, if you get over 13 ounces uh, or even close to it, then uh, uh, generally media mail is going to be cheaper than the first class. But again, you can test that right here. If you've got the dimensions and the weight, then you can put it in here and you can say media mail, what's my cost? Because uh, it's got all of my dimensions and weight and everything in here. So there we go, 272. Now, of course, this item isn't media. It's not a book, so we can't ship it media mail. Okay. Uh, and then, like I say, you can do the same thing with the FedEx option to to verify what is uh, cheapest for you. So there, that gives you some of the basics of you know how do you ship uh, using eBay. Um, it's really as simple as just clicking those uh, those buttons there, uh, print shipping label, and then play around with the the options there on the page once you're in there. Now let's look at how do we set it up uh, in the beginning. If we are planning on shipping through uh, eBay and printing our own shipping label, how do we do that? What are we, um, you know, what are we going to, uh, how are we going to set up the the listing? So this gets into uh, these questions down here, determining the shipping cost, whether or not we're going to offer free shipping. Um, we'll talk about looking at uh, other listings. Uh, those are some of the things that uh, we will look at here. So um, this one uh, we've completed. Um, and uh, so we'll we'll touch on all the rest of those to make sure that we've covered uh, those questions. So here's a listing that I've started um, but uh, have not uh, completed yet. I would get rid of any of these uh, item specifics that I don't want to have that I'm, I'm not going to worry about uh, here. So those will all come off. And then we've got my item listing here. So I've got the, the listing ready to go. Um, this uh, uh, particular item needs uh, uh, you know, more pictures uh, before I complete it, but uh, I've got my price in there with shipping built in because this is a small item that will ship through um, first class. And so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, and so then we, we come down here to the domestic shipping and we can determine what, uh, what shipping method we want to use. 
Now, I, I think I'll go ahead and complete this listing just so you can see what it all looks like uh, completed. We'll, uh, I'll just uh, quickly take some pictures here of the items so that we have that to compare with our, or to, to look at afterward. So I'm actually uh, doing those pictures right now. And I'll show you a little bit about taking the pictures and or or working with the pictures rather as we do this. All right, and and then we'll talk about how to do uh, how to determine the shipping here. All right, so my pictures are uploading there. Uh, I've got those in my Dropbox folder, so they'll they'll be ready for me to upload nice and easy without any uh, um, hoops to jump through. So what are my options now? So I, I'm setting up a, a listing here. We've got a domestic shipping area where I can do a flat rate. I can do a calculated. Uh, we can do freight or local pickup only, all of those. I generally just do the flat rate shipping. Most of the time uh, with my listings, I do free shipping. I've got that, you know, I've got it figured out how uh, how much these items are going to cost, so I'm not uh, too concerned about that, okay? Uh, I've got a question over here from Bracky. Once you print the label from eBay, does eBay provide a link to USPS to schedule your front door pickup by them? Yes, they do. Uh, and uh, that, uh, uh, I'm trying to think if there's a way I can uh, do that uh, to show you. And I think I could, uh, I can print, I could probably print this shipping label. Um, no, I don't, don't want to do that. But uh, they do have that option. Um, once you complete the, the printing label, uh, well, let's just do it. I, I can, uh, what I'll have to do is just save this uh, label image. So you, you click print shipping label. If we're going through USPS, then this charges you as you go through, it actually charges the, the cost of shipping to your PayPal account. So I've just been charged $5.70. I decided to do a padded envelope because it's a little stronger and this is a pretty heavy metal item. I'd hate for it to break through. And you know, I mean, they don't treat these things very well when they're shipping them and moving them around. I'd hate for somebody to throw it and it breaks through and the, it arrives without the item in the, in the package. I've had that happen before. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, pay 570 instead of 505, an extra 65 cents there. Um, so we have deducted 570 from your PayPal account and we'll send your buyer an order update email with delivery details. So it's telling them, you know, it's going to send a, a note to the buyer saying, hey, the item has been shipped. Uh, here's the tracking uh, uh, number. That'll all be sent to the buyer automatically. Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, for this label, I'll click print. And you can just print it to your whatever a printer you want it's set up uh, as a half page i actually buy my labels uh, through ebay so i have uh, um, my label prints out on one half you know there's two labels per page so that'll print out but what i'm going to do is save this as a pdf and so we'll save that and then i can um, print that uh, tomorrow when i'm actually ready to to ship it so We'll just come in here to uh, my camera uploads in my Dropbox folder, and we'll label this uh, U-Joint um, Shipping Label, so it'll be easy for me to find tomorrow. And then I'll save that. And so that's just, uh, uh, that's gonna be the same as uh, as printing. So this is the page then that we would have. Um, and actually I want to, uh, I'm gonna send that to my wife right now so I don't forget. So we'll uh, send that through here. Or uh, let's see, label for you joint. 
see, and then I can just go down here and uh, attach that. And then I can print it from home. So that's all taken care of there. All right. So, all right. So let's say you print the label. Uh, uh, you would click print, and it'll actually pull up uh, the screen that I think we just saw, where you you choose what uh, printer you want to use. But over here on the side, we have all these other options. Starting with right at the top, what would you like to do next? You can ship our next item. We could void this label if we made a mistake and get the, our money back. Uh, we can print a packing slip, which I never do. I don't see any reason in wasting paper to stick a packing slip in there. Nobody cares about that. Um, purchase additional label for this shipment. Uh, if there's two packages for it and I need to purchase another label, I can um, purchase one for each package or something like that. I can return to my eBay, leave feedback, manage my shipments, reprint this label. So I do have the option to reprint a label. If something goes wrong, it doesn't print properly, what do I do? Well, I can reprint uh, the label. I actually uh, don't need this link here because I still got it on the, the screen if I haven't left the screen and I can do that. Otherwise, there is a way to reprint and I'll show you that today. Uh, in fact, let's put that right here as our number seven. How to reprint a label so we can talk about that. All right, and then right down here, um, how do you pack? Uh, how do I pack and ship? Hopefully, you've done this already because if we're printing the label, then we've got it packed and we know what it weighs, right? Pack securely with bubble wrap, taper glue, uh, label the package. Do not tape over the barcodes. What it means by that is don't tape dark tape over the barcode. If you have clear tape, you can tape right over the top of that, no problem. I do it all the time. Okay. Additional shipping services, Requ request a free carrier pickup or order free U.S. Uh, Postal Service shipping supplies. So there's some great options right there that we can use for carrier pickup and ordering supplies direct from the Postal Service. Okay? When we click on that uh, request a free carrier pickup, it's going to take us uh, here to USPS.com where we can enter that uh, information and detail in there and request that to carry your pickup. And that way they can come right to our door. I can leave an, a note to, uh, usually there's an option where I can state, you know, it's on the front porch or something like that. But we could just put our information in here and uh, agree to, to their terms here. Um, once you fill all that out, I think they'll open this up. And the, under this uh, this here section, it says enter any additional instructions. You could put in there items are are on the there we go items are on the front porch, or items are by the mailbox, or whatever you want to do there. You can say it. Okay. Um, what time should we pick up during your regular mail delivery? Um, that's generally what you'd want to do is just at that time. Okay. We don't want to specify a time because then they're going to charge something uh, additional. Um, when do we pick up? And you click the, the next day. So right there you can do a, a free pickup as your mailman is coming by or, or a mail person, whoever it is, driving by to, to drop off the mail. They'll have a notice that when they get to your address, they're supposed to go look for packages and pick them up. So that's great. That's something that we use uh, often uh, ourselves for uh, um, shipping our items and the, the mail carrier uh, uh, on our route has gotten so used to it um, that we can put things uh, out there and just kind of stack them on the mailbox and they'll just take them without us doing any kind of a pickup uh, request as well. But if we have enough that uh, we're going to leave them on the porch, we usually do this so that they, uh, they know to stop for it because otherwise they're not going to check that. They don't usually get out of their van. So that's how you do a, a free carrier pickup. And that's right through uh, eBay's uh, link right here. So you can uh, order the uh, uh, items through uh, the Postal Service as well. Um, let's go look at this. Uh, um, uh, okay, so we'll, we'll talk about uh, ordering items in just a moment. So what about uh, how to determine uh, uh, shipping costs? I have this item here that I want to, uh, to list. Let's go ahead and, and uh, let's finish this. So we can pull up. Our little window here, if you've got uh, a window similar to this for the picture uploader through uh, uh, Google Chrome that I use, 
you click on this add photos and uh, we can come in here and we've got the items that I just took pictures of now these items are, are pretty yellowed out they don't look real good and uh, if I put them in here I can crop them I can uh, uh, improve the color a little bit um, but not a lot with all that yellowing probably I don't know that I can turn that white see I'm still gonna have a lot of that yellow in there and so uh, what uh, what I might do with this is I would come over to a um, free image editor called GIMP and I can go in and pull open those files in my GIMP folder and open them up here and then I can uh, um, get rid of that yellowing if I wanted to do that now I'm taking pictures in in the warehouse here tonight with the uh, um, poor you know rather poor lighting and so uh, I end up with the uh, some problems with the images so normally especially on an item like this uh, you know it's a lower cost item of course I've got 50 of them I should be able to sell them for uh, 45 bucks a piece so uh, it's worth putting a little bit of time into because you know that's a couple hundred dollars there at least but uh, with uh, with GIMP it works just like a, a Photoshop would and it's got a, a series of tools here where I can crop the item uh, to size it to a, a different size that I might want and then I can work with the colors as well and fix the color and so uh, with GIMP I can come in here to my colors and say come into the colors and I could go into uh, you know levels or hue and saturation or something like that to to fix the uh, that yellowing and so uh, generally it's the the hue uh, um, or saturation that you're looking at there uh, it's not going to be the hue so it must be a saturation problem and there we go I can I can just take that to the side there a little bit and get rid of a lot of that uh, problem color but keep in just enough of the yellow so they can see that there and then I can uh, also go into brightness and contrast which you can do on eBay actually this much and I can make that a lot brighter uh, I can bring up contrast so that we can get rid of that uh, um, problem there with it we're still going to have some yellowing because of the bag there but that's okay and then just save that to uh, overwrite the, the existing item. Okay, and that'll resave it over the top of the one that I had there and make a little better item. And then I can do further uh, editing in eBay if I wanted to for that particular item. So that's that's kind of a, getting on a little bit of a tangent for today. Let's Let's look at our shipping. How do I determine what shipping costs to do for this item? Now it's a small item. I know, you know, I've got the, the background, but what if I didn't have the background? What I would do is copy something like that there, go and do a search on eBay to find similar items, which you should be doing anyway. Uh, that's an easy way to start a listing is just to go in, find a, a similar item, um, click on it, and uh, click this Sell Now button right here under the picture. And when I do that, I'm already in the uh, the correct. It puts me in this category. It's not going to bring over the, their image. I still have to take my image and take care of that, but it'll put me in the right category at least. Okay, they've got a, a much better picture there. Uh, I should uh, probably clean mine up and take a better picture of that. But uh, here we've got a similar item: uh, economy, uh, three quarter inch by three quarter inch, 16 mil rod ends, heim joints, uh, and they're doing free shipping and they're selling for for nine dollars. And they've sold 1,600 of these things. Well, they're probably buying them for a buck, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. Uh, but uh, that's you know that's that's great. I mean, uh, gosh, if I, you know I can compete with that, right? So I look at that and say, okay, I I know I can ship that to first class, uh, uh, and it's only going to cost me a couple of dollars, maybe 250. Okay. Um, and so I, I can compete there. Um, but here's one that, uh, notice they don't say free shipping on this one. So we click on that. This will give us an idea. What are other people charging for shipping? Well, they're charging $3. Okay, I can probably get away with charging $3 and ship this thing then, right? What about these guys here with this similar item? $3. Probably the same person, all right? Here's another one. What are they charging? $3 for shipping. 
And yeah, I think these are all the uh, same individual here. So if I wanted to, I could just uh, just come in and look at what others are doing for shipping. They're doing free with a much higher price, and I could determine uh, what I want to do for my listing based on what I see out here for um, for what other people are doing. Here's another one that I've already looked at. It looks like three dollars. Okay, so that's one way to get an idea of what to charge is what are other people doing and sometimes it's not quite that cut and dry where these guys are all doing three dollars so i should charge three dollars or expect three dollars sometimes uh, it might uh, uh, be a little more varied in what they are doing with their shipping okay uh, let's see uh, i've got uh, another question here hey mike on the items don't you have to pay paypal is that what pp stands for viola can you clarify for me uh, if that's what you're saying, I appreciate some clarification that I can answer that question. Yes, PayPal. Yes, PayPal is going to take a, a small fee out of uh, each item when um, when they close. Uh, I can log into my PayPal account and you can see that uh, here. Um, and that's that's something that I don't even feel. It's just a. Uh, um, it's just something that uh, that kind of happens. Uh, you know, it comes out of uh, PayPal there. So we'll go in and look at uh, some of our listings on our items uh, here in PayPal. Um, so if we go in and look at the details of this uh, uh, item, let's see, we need to find uh, where we've received. Um, there we go. We have one here where uh, we re it's a payment from. So we click on that to see the details of that uh, item, and it's going to show me down here the fee amount was $0.65. Cents. So I netted $11.35 on that. So PayPal fees are pretty small. Uh, uh, generally, you're looking at 2.5% uh, uh, to 3% uh, fees, uh, um, plus $0.30, cents, I think, uh, is what they do. So uh, you got $0.30, cents and then the uh three percent uh which it's not usually three percent a lot of times it's a little less so that's how paypal works with their fees and that comes out uh pretty close so um and then uh, we've got another question here from oliver about uh um placement on google uh saying isn't uh isn't your placement uh, better if you've got free shipping well uh, your placement on google is only you know if it's an ebay listing um it's only going to be uh, showing on Google if you do a good till canceled uh, type listing where uh, the item is uh, um, constantly up there um, ongoing. That's the only way that it's uh, it's going to stay up there on Google all the time. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure if uh, if that makes a difference or not. Uh, like I say, I, I only do free shipping. Here, I'll, I'll tell you why I do uh, free shipping. I can calculate the shipping in. I, I've done eBay long enough, I can figure what shipping cost is going to be. So I can just add that to my price. And eBay didn't used to charge fees on shipping. Now they do. And when they changed their policy to charge fees on the sale price and on shipping, I decided why bother trying to, to do a separate shipping cost? A lot of people will bite because it says free shipping. And so I'll get uh, a little more uh, uh, looks, views, watchers, buys because I offer free shipping, even though I'm tacking it on the price. I'm going to get charged the same no matter what through eBay anyway, and it's less for me to have to worry about with, with doing my listing. And so that's why I decided to just do free shipping across the board. So for me, it makes sense. If you're going to do that, though, you've got to have a good idea of what that shipping cost is. So go out and look at other items, get an idea of uh, what they're doing for shipping at least, so you have a, a good idea there. All right, let's go look at uh, another thing that we might need for shipping. So we've, uh, let's see, we've talked about determining the shipping cost, offering free shipping, uh, wrap it in the price, which I normally do. So that's covered. Um, looking at other listings, covered. What about getting a scale? If you're going to ship items from your home, uh, you know, quite a few, of whether you are you have a lot of your own items or you're going to uh, um to go to yard sales or estate sales or thrift stores or what have you to find items to ship, you need to have a scale. You need to know what the items are going to weigh. So 
Go look at eBay for a shipping scale and find a shipping scale that's within your budget and buy it. I generally, uh, this looks nice right there, 86 pounds. 0.1 one ounce, 86 pounds, 11 bucks and 50 cents. Um, it's got bids, it ends in 41 minutes, so I might be able to get that for 15 bucks. That's worth it to me, right? Um, I only paid about that much. I got one like this. Uh, it looks uh, exactly like that one right there, um, but I think it uh, goes up to uh, 80 pounds. This one says 50 pounds uh, 0.2 uh, by 0.2 ounce. Uh, it does grams or ounces. Uh, most uh, most of these anyway do, uh, but it, you know, it, there's a lot of uh, of options out there for a shipping scale that don't cost much. This one's 15.99, free shipping, and it's buy it now. I don't have to wait for a, a bid to end. I can just buy that sucker and and have one and be done. In fact, I'm probably going to go ahead and do that because I I need to have another one uh, out in the garage. My wife's been bugging me about that, so I'll just come in here and do. A, I could make an offer to them and say, hey, I want it a little cheaper. I'll just buy it now rather than waiting for an offer and uh, order that shipping scale. There I've got it. I'll pay with my PayPal account, confirm and pay, and I'll have another scale to, to work with at home. Um, I would highly recommend you see how easy that was? Quick and fast. It's, it's on its way. I'll have it in a few days and, and there's my shipping scale. So I would highly recommend that you get a scale uh, and uh, eBay is a great place to get it. You get some feedback from doing that as well. Um, we talked about comparing with other listings in eBay. We've talked about the different carriers. Uh, I don't use U, uh, UPS. It's either USPS or it's FedEx. That's going to be the best, okay? Um, when do I ship using eBay versus going to the post office? 100% of the time, in my opinion. <laughs> the only reason you go to the post office is if you don't know what the weight is. Get a scale. Weigh the item. It's going to be far better for you uh, to do that. Your your costs are going to be uh, cheaper to go through eBay. So I think that uh, is uh, you know one benefit right there. If you're going to do a lot of them, it's a good way to do it. Okay. So um, so definitely get yourself a scale and and uh, weigh things there. All right. Um, packaging. That uh, is another question coming up here. How do I get the uh, the packaging? Um, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I never pay, okay, I seldom pay for packing materials. Uh, you can see here I have uh, ordered some uh, online actually through eBay. Um, EcoSwift is a great seller on eBay where I can get mailers. I've ordered, uh, uh, this is a, a poly padded mailer envelope uh, um, where I got 100 uh, of these, 10 by, oh no, these are just the non-padded envelopes. 100 of them for 426, 200 uh, uh uh, of them for 13.45, uh, and then uh, here's some padded uh, mailers. Uh, it looks like uh, um, for 12.65. So you can order those uh, online. You know, I mean that's cheap. 100 of those for four dollars and 26 cents. It's four cents a piece. And that's pretty cheap. So for padded envelopes, for the mylar or poly uh, envelope mailers, uh, I generally just buy that through. The uh, EcoSwift here on uh, eBay. I buy my tape through EcoSwift. There's EcoSwift right there. Great seller. They've got a ton of things. Look at that. 204,000 on their feedback. They've been around for a long time. They've sold 20,000 rolls of that tape. They've got 4,700 listings. That's what you want, guys. If you're going to run this like a full time business, you need to have thousands of items up here. That's where you're going to be able to, to have the income that you need. So you've got to get to that point. Um, but here I've got 100 uh, mailers that I can buy, nine bucks. That, that's great, you know. And they generally offer free shipping on, on most of their things too. So, um, But they've got a, a great uh, store in here, the EcoSwift. I don't buy boxes to ship. That's what I get uh, free. Um, where do I go to get my free boxes, you might wonder? Well, let me tell you. I don't go to the web, but I go to my friendly local Walmart store. I walk into Walmart, and almost every time I go to Walmart without fail, they're stocking something. They're putting something out on the shelves. So what do they do with the boxes? They put them in carts. They fill up their carts. Then they have to truck them back to the back of the store. Then they have to put them in a, a, a baler uh, recycling system there that bales them for them and ship them out somewhere to recycle. 
you go in there and ask somebody, hey, can I have, I don't even ask anymore. Can I have some, some of these boxes? Uh, uh, I've never had uh, anybody say no. They're always like, yes, please take them. It's less work for me. And so I'll pick through the, the cart of boxes there, find the sizes that uh, work best for the items that I ship and take them out with me. Sometimes I go to Walmart just to get the boxes. Don't buy anything. Other times I'll buy something and I just have a bunch of empty boxes in my cart. A lot of times they're all broken down for you and flattened, so you don't even have to worry about uh, uh, breaking them down. Uh, they're they're already flat. That's where I get my free shipping supplies. Walmart, Smith's Grocery Store, other grocery stores, um, Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware is one of my favorites. They have a lot of little boxes because they have a lot of small items they're putting out on their shelves. And so that's a great uh, uh, place to get them. So that's one of the uh, uh, one of the things I do for free shipping supplies. Now I also talk to uh, friends and neighbors uh, about uh, um, you know what I'm doing, and I've got a neighbor who uh, uses a lot of boxes in his business, uh, and so he'll give them to me. Um, toy stores oftentimes have good sized boxes. Guys, they're throwing these things away. They, they want you to take them. So great to uh, um, great way to get free boxes. Okay, um, really any uh, any store that has product. The department store is not quite as much. Um, you're not usually going to see. They want to keep uh, things looking nice, you know, and so they're usually not going to bring boxes out and stock the shelves until nighttime. So, you know, and oftentimes when the store is closed. So if you go to 24 hour. You know, stores that are open 24 hours, Walmart's great. Late at night, especially, they'll be, you know, overnight. They're going to be restocking just like everybody else, but they'll often do it during the day, too. But if you go late at night, yeah, you'll have a great chance of, uh, of finding any box size you need, okay? And uh, um, so that's a, a great uh, way to go. Uh, and then uh, Viola uh, mentions here that she also saves the uh, the packaging that she receives through the mail. We do that, too. Anything we, we buy through... Uh, um, uh, Amazon, when we're getting those, uh, uh, you know, when, when those packages come, we pull out the, the bubbles uh, and, and air pillows and stuff, and we stick it in a big cardboard box in our uh, shipping room or in the garage where we have all our items, and we save that for shipping. So uh, absolutely a great way. Another one I'll tell you that I've used, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, most of you probably have some kind of a recycle uh, program in your town, and uh, and I don't know uh, what uh, uh, you know how people are in your area, but here you go to a, to a dumpster, you can pull anything out of it, and there's no worries uh, for the most part. Um, and so I'll go uh, uh, behind the stores where they have these uh, these dumpsters, and I know uh, two or three areas. One's by a school, one's by a um, uh, out in the Smith's parking lot, ones uh, behind the, uh, a, a little strip mall, um, where they have a, a recycle bin, just basically a big dumpster. It's green instead of you know the tr traditional colors for dumpsters, um, for people to bring you know of the community to just bring their boxes and and uh, um, recyclable material, plastics and, and stuff like that. So I've gotten bubble wrap uh, from there. I've gotten the the bubble pillows. I've gotten boxes, uh, styrofoam uh, and styrofoam blocks, all that kind of stuff uh, um, out of these uh, little dumpsters. Uh, I don't crawl into the whole you know all the way into the dumpster if I can reach it. Uh, I'll grab it, and uh, you know that's one way that I've gotten some things before as well. So. Another question here, how and who would be the best way to ship furniture items? All right, shipping your own furniture items, I do not rock recommend. Um, for furniture items, uh, I would just search for a, a local free classified um, type uh, platform. We have a, a local um, news um, uh, studio here in uh, Salt Lake, KSL. Um, and uh, I can go on to KSL Classifieds. They have a classified uh, section on their um, uh, on their site where I can go in and, and place an ad. So for larger items like that, uh, with the um, uh, furniture and stuff, I'd come in here and place an ad. Okay. Um, so see if you've got uh, something like that in local classifieds in your area. Uh, you know, I, if I were to search for this uh, Salt Lake. City class classifieds. Now I'm not in Salt Lake. I'm 30 uh, 30 miles south of Salt Lake, but uh, I do a search for it, and sure enough, KSL.com comes up twice. 
Salt Lake City dot Craigslist. Craigslist is an option. Those are the kinds of places I would use for shipping large items. Uh, I don't recommend doing that to um, yourself. Now I see that. However, let me give you a, <laughs> take a look here. I do have a, a, a very heavy item. It's not furniture per se. It's a, it's an old phonograph that I have listed right now that I will be shipping on my own when it uh, is ready to go. And I'll use some very heavy duty foam around this item. Um, but it is uh, extremely heavy, uh, uh, at least 30 or 40 pounds, I think, uh, for this thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know where it uh, I've had too many uh finding the item is is uh is going to be difficult. So, uh, actually I could do a search for it. Phonograph right there. So I've got this uh, Thomas Edison uh home phonograph uh um player um that uh that I need to ship, and this sucker is heavy. Uh, it must just be solid iron in that bottom section there, because <laughs> uh, it, is, it is very, very heavy. And I've got that, plus uh, uh, in the background there, you can see a, a box of uh, uh, the film rolls that go on it that I have to ship. So that's going to go in a large box. It's going to be very carefully packed uh, with lots of bubble wrap and foam, uh, um, making sure that that's secure to ship that item out. And then I'm going to ship it FedEx. So you can, you know, ship things. I haven't shipped anything that's, I think the the bulkiest, weirdest thing I've done with shipping was uh, a big long pole for uh, an IV, one of those IV poles that I, I got at, at Surplus. And uh, it was probably five foot long or so, maybe six. And uh, I put it in a great big long tube uh, and, uh, you know, packed it well and, and shipped it. Uh, and I shipped at FedEx. Uh, FedEx can do some of those uh, awkward, bulky things. Um, but uh, see what it's going to cost uh, before you know you, you go into that, uh, get an idea of it, uh, so you you know what to expect. But big furniture items, uh, honestly, uh, do a local pickup uh, and trade with somebody. I think that would be the best option. Another question here: What would you suggest on a wall tapestry that is rolled up with a wooden rod that goes with it? It would be um, round and about two and a half feet long. That's not too bad. Um, something like that, uh, uh, you could put in a, a, a cardboard box. For something where you need a larger cardboard box, later at night when Walmart's putting bigger things out, you might look for that. TV boxes uh, are usually pretty steady or sturdy. Furniture boxes, go to the back of furniture stores or just go talk to somebody at a furniture store and ask, do you have a big box I can can take uh, you know I need some some big boxes or something and they'll uh, they'll offer you cardboard and boxes you can use all the time you want to get the real thick corrugated uh, stuff if it's something that you're really concerned about and want to make sure it's protected but if this tapestry is uh, not too heavy when it's rolled up it won't be a big deal to, to just put it in a, a box so not too uh, too big a deal uh, advantages of printing labels with eBay honestly you know it's cheaper going to get a discount through eBay. Uh, um, I like using the the labels, uh, uh, the stickers that I can buy through eBay, uh, and uh, then they just stick right on the package. So that's all we use. Uh, then I don't have to deal with trying to tape it on. Um, sometimes I'll tape over it just to make sure that it stays there. Okay. Um, tubes, well, I've got a question here, where can you get the tubes for shipping? Well, you could buy them, if you wanted, um, those are uh, items that I've also found uh, uh, in dumpsters behind uh, warehouses where, uh, uh, you know, if you have somebody who's uh, doing a, a graphic design company or a photo printing company or, or uh, an art company, uh, um, stuff like that, or a carpet company, then you'll get all kinds of tubes being thrown out at those types of uh, places. And uh, I've picked some of those up before and used those for shipping. Uh, so again, it's just kind of looking around uh, uh, at the different uh, places. Uh, and yeah, there's a little bit of uh, running around. I don't mind it. If that's something that you just don't want to do, then you're going to have to find a, you know, a solution where you can go and buy it. Uh, but you're going to have to travel somewhere to do that too. Why not look around at the dumpsters where people are throwing the stuff out? 
Uh, and uh, once you, you know, if you, you find a place like that, maybe you can go talk to the owner of the store and say, hey, uh, you know, I, I ship a lot of uh, this type of item where I could use this for shipping. Um, any chance I can get you to save some of those rolls for me if I come pick them up uh, once a week? Um, or just ask them if they have any when you come in, you know, and maybe they won't save them. Maybe they will. I've, I've done that with people and uh, had uh, had them save things like that for me. So sometimes that can work real well. Um, I think we've covered best shipping for small items and large items. We've we've kind of covered that there. Uh, the awkward item, I think we just talked about that. Um, supplies, we've talked about. Let's uh, let's go in and uh, we'll finalize this uh, webinar with um, how to reprint a label because um, I think that's a good one to to show you. So in my eBay, go to selling. Wait for eBay to work. Give me a chance to get a little water in me. All right, so in the My eBay section, under the uh, Selling or Selling Manager or Manager Pro, if you have that, you'll have uh, um, down here, there should be an option for shipping labels, okay? And so you can come in and click on that. And basically what that's going to do is show you the labels that you've printed. Notice that they each have a, a, a tracking number there that's automatically created for you, so you don't have to worry about doing that. You can click here to reprint the label. And this will not charge you again. This will just reprint uh, the same label for you. Uh, one thing I've found is when you do come in to reprint, it doesn't put it in the same format. And so if you have the sticker labels, it crosses the labels instead of putting it on one side. It's a little annoying. Um, that, that At least that's how it works in... Um, Google Chrome. Now I had some problems with that uh, a while back and was trying to was frustrated with it because I had to reprint a lot of them and uh, I didn't want to waste my label paper and uh, I tried it in Firefox and it printed different and it printed properly in Firefox. So go figure different browsers are going to act differently. You've got other actions under here where you can void the label. You can do the, the print another label which is the same as reprint. Um, or print, print a packing slip. So um, actually print another label might be the one where they actually, you can actually get, uh, go in and, and be charged to print a new label. If you print a FedEx label and never use it, don't take it to FedEx. Uh, you don't have to void it. You can't void it because they don't charge you until they actually ship it, until it's scanned. So uh, you don't have to worry about voiding a FedEx label if it hasn't been used. So I hope that uh, is helpful for you. I, I went through a lot of details there with uh, uh, with shipping. Uh, uh, this was a very thorough uh, uh, webinar. I didn't expect to go this long, but uh, uh, hopefully that's been very helpful. Uh, if you have further questions, uh, let us know. We're always happy to help.